welcome to another episode of It's Wild Out There, guys. Now today, precisely what I'm going to be talking about is everything you need to know about snakes. So, it's another differences episode of It's Wild Out There, but this one's going to be more interesting, hopefully. Now, as most of you know, I've got quite a bit of a thing for snakes. That's right, guys. Today, I will be talking precisely about that. That I'll be talking about. No, no, that makes sense. Okay, so that's right guys, today I'm going to be talking about how to tell the difference between a venomous and a non-venomous snake. Now guys, before we start, I'm just going to let you guys know that from my previous quiz, if you paid attention, my favourite animal is by far the deadliest snake on earth, the inland type of emergency behind me. Anyway, let's get now started. guys, the first thing that I'm going to be talking about is appearances. Now, I'm sure some of you have heard the appearance, appearances can be deceiving, and that could not be more true for snakes. Anyway, let's start talking. So, the first and most obvious difference, obviously, is the head shape. Most venomous snakes have a much wider head than non-venomous snakes, as those heads carry venom, and that is located at the side of the head, which carry venom glands, which is inserted into the prey to the fang, so it's kind of like a circulatory system. Aha! It's the circulatory system. And that is precisely what I'll be talking about next when it comes to venom. Anyway, the next difference is the eyes. You can instantly tell a venomous from a non-venomous snake because most venomous snakes or highly venomous snakes have eyes that look a bit like a cat's eye. Slits are slit eyes actually. Like so our eyes are like this, right? A circular. Most non-venomous snakes have friendly looking eyes, actually. Well technically all snakes have friendly looking eyes to me. <laughs> Maybe not for you guys. I don't know. I don't know. No, really, I don't know. Anyway. So yes, the eyes is one of the main differences. Most venomous snakes have slit eyes or black eyes. Hopefully they didn't get into any fights. And most non-venomous snakes have friendly looking too tight, really. Well, only to me anyway. Now, let's get on to the next subject of how to tell the differences. So, that's right guys, I'm going to be talking about venom. Now guys, venom and hunting strategies is another big difference. Like, if you see a snake at the side of the road, you have no idea if it's venomous or not, and you see it eating a rat, that's kind of a good image. I don't really like that. Sorry for those of you who like rats. Anyway, so for the first two, I've been talking about appearances. But now, I'm going to be talking about venom and hunting. So, basically how snakes deal with their prey. For example, a rat. Sorry for those of you who have a pet rat called Pat. Really, I'm sorry. Anyway, the first thing you have to know about venomous snakes is the way they kill prey with which venom. Aha! Yes, different snakes use different venom. There are three main distinct types of venom. Um, and I will be defining them for you right now. So the first one is neurotoxic venom, which affects the nervous system. And uh, the type of snakes that use this are cobras. So if you have a snake about to eat another snake, because co cobras eat smaller pythons, they need to kill it quickly so that they can eat it quite, quite fast. The second one is hematoxic venom, which affects the circulatory system. As I said before, it's heart, lungs, all that. Well, I'm not an expert on the body, okay? Just, I, I, No time for breathing. Okay, so the second one, I just told you, oh no I didn't. The second one is hematoxic venom, which affects the circular. I did just say that. No you didn't. Yes I did. You didn't. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next one now. Jeez. So, wait, I'm confused. Did I say hematoxic or neurotoxic? I don't know. No, I'm up to hematoxic. No. Hematoxic venom affects the circulatory system. Neurotoxic venom affects the nervous system. Cobras use neurotoxic venom, and coral snakes and vipers, for example, use hematoxic venom. And the last one that I'll be talking about is cytotoxic venom, which affects the cells. And the type of snakes that use this are rattlesnakes. And I'm quite sure, hopefully, that most of you know what a rattlesnake is, so I don't have to define it for you. Okay, so I've been talking about venom and how venomous snakes deal with prey, but what I haven't talked to you about is how non-venomous snakes deal with prey. Now, most of you will probably know how they deal with prey, but I'll just go do it anyway. So, non-venomous snakes, such as pythons, as you can see here, Morelia viridis, the green tree python. It's my dream to find one of those snakes. So, this one, my favourite, in that type of... Okay, I'm going off subject again, I really am sorry. I have a bad habit doing that. 
Okay, before I go off subject again, let me start talking. So, constrictors, which are like pythons, for example, as you can see, okay, sorry. So, constriction basically means to strangle. So, constrictors squeeze and squeeze and squeeze until there's no life left. So, and don't be scared because they don't eat people. They got way too big. So, they basically squeeze and squeeze until there is absolutely no life left. And constrictors can include from a rather very small flower pot snake, which might be hiding in your flower pot. Um, well, hopefully not. For me, yes, but most of you have been. From the rather small flower pot snake to the whopper reticulated python, the biggest snake on earth. The biggest one was recorded to be almost 12 meters long. Something like that. Very, very long snake. Heaven for me. Anyway, so a, a fully grown reticulated python is big enough to swallow a cow. Now, let's move on to the next and final section, which is... Now guys, eggs and parental care is also another very important difference that I'm going to be mentioning. So guys, most people believe that snakes just leave their young on the street to die and fend for themselves, and that is NOT TRUE! It's not true! And I'm here to stand up for those wonderful snakes because I love snakes! That right there is my favourite one, the Inland Taipan. And that right there is my second favourite one, Marilia viridis, the Green Tree Python. Okay, sorry I got a bit tricky there guys. Now, as I said, most people don't believe that snakes care for their young at all, but actually, snakes are brilliant mums. Almost as brilliant as our human mums. Okay, maybe not that good, but they're, they're really good mums when it comes to the animal kingdom. Anyway, so some snake species give birth to live young, and most snake species have eggs, and wait for the cute little squirts to hatch out before beginning their lives. So guys, venomous snakes and non-venomous venomous snakes, it, it varies between the species really. There's no right or wrong answer when it comes to like eggs and incubation and stuff. Although, an interesting fact. Now guys, I know there are some teenagers watching this. Don't take this the wrong way, okay? Because I am actually a teenager myself, 14 years old. But don't take this the wrong way. Just warning you guys. So, to determine the sex of whether it's a male or a female egg depends on the temperature of the nest. So, most likely, the hot ones... Okay, that's it. I'm not talking about what this anymore. You guys are going to take this the wrong way. Bah, 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 but yes, the, the sex can be determined by the temperature of the nest. Okay? That's how it can be determined. Right? So, some snakes give birth to live young and some give birth to eggs. Now, guys, habitat is one other main factor. Now guys, before I even start, I'm going to say that there is not just only one location where venomous snakes hang out and non-venomous snakes hang out. It varies between the individual species. So the inland taipan, my favourite snake as I've said already, mostly lives in the deserts and the red dead centre of Australia. And the Morelia viridis, the green tree python, lives in the lush rainforests. Rainforests, what? The rainforests of northern Australia and parts of Papua New Guinea. Anyway, so the habitat varies between the separate individual species of snake. For example, I just said that, what's wrong with me? So, technically, there is no right or wrong answer where particular snakes live. It varies between the individual species. <sighs> or wherever there's the most food. So now guys, I'm going to summarise all that you've learnt, because you've learnt quite a lot, I hope. Number one, most venomous snakes have arrow-shaped heads, clearly showing off their venom glands on the sides of their heads. Two, most non-venomous snakes have rather blunt sort of heads and uh, more teeth really, but non-venomous teeth, although they do still have teeth, and if you get bitten by those teeth, it's going to leave quite a messy bite and uh, maybe get infected as well. Three, venomous snakes use venom to kill prey. Don't have to be a genius to figure that out, do ya? Simple, why else did a venomous snake have venom? I don't know. To brush its teeth with? No, to kill prey. Simple, why is it so difficult for me to understand this? Oh my God. Sorry, I just, okay, I'm sorry. Number four, snakes are great parents giving birth to live young or eggs and keeping them safe and warm until they hatch. 
most uh, quite a lot of animal species just reject their their kids as soon as they're born, and they're like, oh no, my kids are born, I'm out of here later. But snakes really are actually quite brilliant mothers. They stay, keep them safe and warm until they're ready to begin their lives. So that's awesome. Another good one for snakes. Go on, you guys. Now five. All individual snake species have different habitats. I'm going to say that again. All different individual snake species are found in different habitats. For example, the inland saipan, I don't need to say it again, but I will, it's my favourite snake in the world, is found in the red dead centre of Australia. And uh, the green tree python, Morelia viridis, is found in the lush rainforests of Papua New Guinea and northern Queensland. So guys, there is no right or wrong answer for that. Now guys, I'm gonna stop the video there because I don't want to keep you waiting or whatever you're doing right now. So if you liked that video, then please like and subscribe and help us reach 50 and plus subscribers. And when I say that, I don't mean 50 plus as in the age. I mean 50 plus as in subscribe. Anyway, so guys, it's wild out there would really not happen. I'm just, I'm being completely honest with you guys. It's wild out there would not happen without all your help and support. So thank you all so much. So in the comments below guys, I want you to tell me what videos you would like me to do. Because well, all questions are valid and there are no silly questions guys. So thanks for watching and I bid you adieu. See you later.